This is an upside down world, where various ancient behemoths exist, and the chase of the food chain is performed every day. This is also King Khan's home. Here, King Khan is the king. Just a few days ago, King Khan was living on a small island, and upon waking up, he shook his head, scratched his buttocks, and took a cool shower under the waterfall. He sniffed the air and felt something was amiss, casually uprooting a large tree, stripping off the leaves, and hurling the stick into the sky, which instantly cracked open. It turns out this was a virtual reality space, created by humans to prevent Godzilla from finding King Kong, designed as a world isolated from the rest. Here, only a little girl accompanies him. She is a survivor from the natives of Skull Island. She came here with King Kong, and clearly, King Kong is already weary of this place, soon unsuitable for his survival, and the scientists had no solution. Elsewhere, Godzilla began attacking human cities, seemingly enraged by something. He recklessly destroyed the city, smashing helicopters, leading people to flee in panic. Even Rin Serizawa had to escape. He was the executive of the largest scientific research group. With the Earth's core structure being a key research direction, they discovered a hollow world in the Earth's core, containing immense energy that could make its inhabitants gigantic. To obtain this energy to create weapons against Godzilla, the group had already built anti-gravity flyers to reach the core's depths, but they needed King Kong's guidance. King Kong's ancestors came from the depths of the Earth's core, possessing genetic memory to guide them there. After being injected with several barrels of sedatives, under military escort, they began their journey towards the Earth's core passage. This route was perfectly designed to avoid Godzilla, but they were still concerned about the legendary rivalry between King Kong and Godzilla. Should they meet, a great battle would ensue. However, the unexpected happened. Godzilla still found them. The fleet initiated an attack, missiles streaking across the sky towards Godzilla, but they were merely an itch to him. Godzilla retaliated, instantly destroying two warships, charging straight towards King Kong. As King Kong roared, Godzilla suddenly emerged from beneath the ship, flipping the giant vessel instantly, and King Kong sank into the water with it, his limbs bound by chains, unable to move, with water flooding in. It wouldn't be long before everyone drowned. Only King Kong could save them now. The scientists frantically unlocked the chains binding King Kong, and the two behemoths began tangling underwater. Clearly, Godzilla had the advantage in the water, but King Kong was smart, hitting Godzilla and swiftly swimming to the surface. His huge body turned the tide. He knew he was no match for Godzilla in the water, but on the surface, it was still a limitation for King Kong. He could only jump between a few warships, searching for Godzilla. King Kong hurled a fighter jet at Godzilla, who climbed aboard an aircraft carrier ready to confront King Kong head-on. King Kong started with a heavy punch, and Godzilla responded with a claw. Fighter jets came to support King Kong, interrupting Godzilla's atomic breath. Seizing the moment, King Kong landed another heavy punch on Godzilla. Godzilla retreated to the sea, emitting a blue glow. Sensing danger, King Kong jumped off the carrier and fell back into the water. They tussled again underwater, with King Kong still at a disadvantage. He struggled towards the surface as Godzilla dragged him deeper, but dozens of depth charges exploded at the seabed, disorienting Godzilla. Moments later, King Kong emerged, struggling onto the carrier, weak but victorious, yet Godzilla hadn't left. The scientists suggested turning off all equipment to make Godzilla think he had one. The commander ordered all engines and power sources to be shut down, silencing everything. Godzilla slowly surfaced, looking at the barely alive King Kong, displaying the posture of a victor, and then disappeared into the battlefield. The little girl thanked the weakened King Kong. Here, only she could communicate with him, to avoid encountering Godzilla again. The army deployed dozens of helicopters to transport King Kong to the Antarctic Passage. King Kong still didn't trust humans and was reluctant to head to the Earth's core, but the scientists believed that his kind existed there. So, through the little girl, they told King Kong that his family was in the depths of the Earth's core. Upon understanding the girl's message, King Kong turned and rushed towards the passage, with the scientists quickly starting the flyer to follow him. The flyer could withstand the reversal of gravity and the power needed for a single engine was enough to support Las Vegas' electricity for a week. Their biggest concern at that moment was whether they could successfully pass through the channel. Next, the flyer passed through the first gravity barrier, and everyone was oppressed by the reversed gravity, unable to breathe. When the flyer passed through the second gravity barrier, King Kong and the flyer began to free fall. King Kong landed on a mountainside and began to plummet rapidly, luckily grabbing a rock to prevent falling. Three flyers started to fly low, 
with King Kong closely following them. Upon arrival, they discovered a space in the Earth's core with unique gravity, dividing it into two inverted worlds. As everyone marveled at the scenery, one plane was destroyed by an unknown creature, and just as another was about to be attacked, King Kong grabbed the flying serpent's tail and slammed it heavily to the ground. Another flying serpent was hit hard, and when King Kong relaxed, it coiled around him, covering his head with its wings. King Kong grabbed the flying serpent and slammed it again, then with a few heavy punches, the serpent died under his fists. King Kong continued towards the thunderous area, as if something was calling him. Led by King Kong, they arrived at a giant stone, where he found a large handprint and pressed his palm against it. The door slowly opened, revealing a spacious palace inside. This was King Kong's home. A fierce battle had once taken place here. King Kong looked at the skeletons at his feet and pulled out an ancestral axe. As he sat on the throne, the axe in his hand emitted blue light, seemingly guiding King Kong. Then King Kong placed the axe into the ground, and a stream of blue energy flowed towards it. As the ring of light formed, Godzilla's figure appeared. The axe was made from Godzilla's dorsal fin. The scientists took the opportunity to collect energy samples and transmitted the data to their headquarters in Hong Kong. At that moment, Godzilla was attracted to Hong Kong by the massive energy fluctuation. Sensing the energy of the Earth's core, he aimed and sent an atomic breath towards the Earth's core, quickly connecting the surface world with the core. Godzilla roared into the passage, and King Kong responded. King Kong picked up the axe and jumped into the pit, with a few scientists following closely. King Kong hooked the exit with the axe and slowly climbed up from below, roaring at Godzilla, having been defeated in water before. He was ready for a proper fight. King Kong swung the axe, but Godzilla cleverly dodged it. Godzilla's atomic breath was interrupted by King Kong. After a few heavy punches, he restrained Godzilla's atomic assault. King Kong kicked Godzilla away, gradually showing the aura of a king. As Godzilla was about to release his atomic breath, King Kong disrupted it with the axe handle. Finally, Godzilla unleashed his ultimate move, but it was blocked by the giant axe. Godzilla took advantage of the situation to knock King Kong down, then flung the giant axe away. Without his axe, King Kong had to dodge around, jumping continuously between buildings, facing Godzilla's ranged attacks. King Kong seized the opportunity to pull out his axe and strike at Godzilla. The massive energy blast sent both titans flying, with King Kong shaking off the dust and disappearing into the night. Godzilla began searching for King Kong, who jumped onto Godzilla's back, finally finding an opportunity for close combat and unleashing a barrage of blows on Godzilla. Godzilla then bit King Kong and threw him over his shoulder, sending King Kong crashing heavily into a building, dislocating his arm. The severely injured King Kong's fighting power diminished, and he was pinned down and trampled by Godzilla. The intense pain caused King Kong to roar, and after a few more heavy stomps, King Kong seemed to realize he had lost. Showing a look of unwillingness, the battle between the kings ended like this. Godzilla didn't intend to kill King Kong, they only wanted to prove who was stronger, not actually kill each other. At this time, the human-made Mechagodzilla had fully charged, and Rin Serizawa connected to Mechagodzilla through King Ghidorah's skull as an interface. Due to its immense power, it developed King Ghidorah's consciousness and broke free from Rin Serizawa's control. Bursting out of the base, it set out to seek revenge on Godzilla, with a beam of red light shooting out of the ground alerting Godzilla. Mechagodzilla destroyed buildings along its path, and Godzilla charged decisively towards it. Mechagodzilla fired dozens of missiles, bombarding Godzilla before he could get close. Mechagodzilla, powered by flames jetting from its back, punched Godzilla, knocking him to the ground. Then it lifted Godzilla by the neck and struck him with charged punches. Godzilla was beaten without the ability to retaliate. After standing up, both titans unleashed atomic breaths. Mechagodzilla unleashed its maximum energy, overpowering Godzilla, who was sent flying and seriously injured, emitting a fierce roar. Meanwhile, guided by the little girl, King Kong realized that Godzilla was not the enemy, but the mechanical beast was. Watching Godzilla being brutally beaten, King Kong pondered for a moment. Then he stood up and slammed his dislocated shoulder against a building, popping the bone back into place, as Godzilla was again pinned to the ground by Mechagodzilla, which was about to release atomic breath. King Kong came to the rescue, he twisted Mechagodzilla's mouth towards the sky, saving Godzilla from death. Mechagodzilla punched King Kong away, but its next punch was blocked by Godzilla. The two kings each grabbed Mechagodzilla's arms for a counterattack, but they were still no match and remained in a passive state. King Kong picked up the axe and struck Mechagodzilla, 
but it was ineffective due to depleted energy, Godzilla seized the opportunity to unleash atomic breath, instantly charging the axe. With one swing, King Kong severed Mechagodzilla's arm, followed by several strikes that quickly dismantled Mechagodzilla. The defeated Mechagodzilla still tried to resist, but King Kong, with all his might, instantly chopped it apart. King Kong viciously ripped off Mechagodzilla's head, issuing a victorious roar. In this collaboration, Godzilla acknowledged King Kong, roaring at him before heading towards the sea. King Kong also returned to his homeland, the Deep Earth's core, his true home.